In this video, I'm going to show you all the steps involved in machining the compressor housings for the 3000 GT and the Dodge Stealth to accept 20T compressor wheels. That's 47 by 58 by 60. Here's another set of upgraded turbos for the 3000 GT. I think they're 13 G's. But you can see the difference in the inlet size. If you plan to do a build like this, you can expect to spend about 20 to 30 hours doing this build. The turbine housings also get machined from their 40 millimeter TDO4 to a 45 by 52 millimeter TDO4 HL 9 blade turbine. The margin for error on these is really small. So if you've never done one before, I suggest that you send it to a professional. The compressor housings for these turbos get machined three separate times. This is the first step, machining for the compressor wheel. So I have this on CNC so it makes it a lot easier. It saves me over two hours of doing it by hand. Instead of spending two hours doing it by hand, this machine will cut the compressor housing out for the wheel in about seven minutes. Here I'm using the dial indicator to set up the second housing for machining. To start the program, I have to click on memory. And that selects the active program. Once the active program is up, press cycle start. I wrote this program in three separate steps. Inside diameter bore for the inducer, the radius program for the radius, and then inside diameter bore for the exducer. Here's a good comparison to show you just how big this compressor wheel is compared to the stock wheel. The stock wheel is about 35 millimeter and the compressor wheel that we're putting in it is 47 millimeter. So about a 12 millimeter difference per turbo. Here's step two of the machining process. The inlets have to be cut off of the compressor housings and re-sleeved with pipes. Even the compressor housing becomes extremely thin. We're talking about maybe a millimeter or two of the wall. It's critical to stagger the bore so that it's not a press fit until the, the very end of the housing where the casting is much thicker. Here is compressor housing number two being machined. If you've done this before, you'll notice that one housing actually is a thinner casting than the other one but it's not a problem because as long as you stagger the bore you don't have to worry about that here's me machining the pipe this pipe is going to be our new inlet I got this pipe from I think metalsdepot.com The margin for error on this is so small. It, the casting needs to be 0.3 of a millimeter larger than the pipe. And I also add some adhesive so that the pipe will not come out.
after the pipe is pressed in the compressor housing, then the compressor housing is put back on the machine and the pipe is machined out for the compressor wheel. Now you know exactly why there's companies out there that charge over $3,000 for this build. It's extremely challenging, but that's the kind of challenge I like to have. I like to make these videos so that I can show you the skill level I have for machining. One thing to keep in mind is that you do need to file the edge of the pipe or machine it in a, such a way that the pipe will not, you will not be able to see the clearance between the pipe and the compressor housing once it's pressed in. Now the margin for error on this is extremely small. So if you don't do that, your compressor housing can end up just like this. On one of them, I forgot to do that and it's a fraction of a millimeter, but I'm just going to leave that. In order to fix that microscopic eyesore, the compressor housing has to be remachined back out and re-sleeved. I don't do a whole lot of these builds because it's extremely time consuming, but every now and then I do take on a couple of these builds. If I'm willing to do it, you can always find out by contacting me at turbolabamerica at gmail.com. If you need replacement parts for your build, then I'll go ahead and link to those in the description box.